In this video, we are going to look at linear programming. Now, in linear programming, there would be a function that we would have to optimize, and there would also be a list of constraints. Now, optimize could mean finding the maximum value or the minimum value. So here we have our question. We have a businessman has some $160. He wants to buy CDs at $80 each and cassettes at $40 each in order to resell them at a profit. He must buy more than one CD. So this is a constraint. He must buy more than one CD, but not more than six CDs. Another constraint. He must also buy at least two cassettes. This is also a constraint. The businessman make a profit of $25 on each CD and $15 on each cassette. So from the statement here, we could form our function for our profit, which we can maximize or minimize. So now the question wants us to determine the number of CDs and cassettes he must buy to give a maximum profit. So we want to maximize the profit function. So now let's list out the constraints, which would be inequalities. But before we do that, we need to know what our variables are. Now the best way to determine what the variables are is to look at the question and see what they are asking. So determine the number of CDs and cassettes. So we want the number of CDs and the number of cassettes. That's what we want to find. That would give us a maximum profit. Now if you recall our previous videos where we looked at how to represent an inequality on the Cartesian plane, and then how to represent multiple inequalities on the Cartesian plane to find the region that satisfies all the inequalities and get the maximum and also the minimum value for our function, you would know that we are going to represent these inequalities on the Cartesian plane and the Cartesian plane has an x-axis and a y-axis. Therefore, our variables will be x and y. So we would let x be the number of CDs and let y be the number of cassettes. So I'll have let x represent the number of CDs and let y represent the number of cassettes. So now that we know what our variables are, we could form our inequalities. So when we read a businessman has $760, that's the maximum amount of money that he has. So he cannot cross $760. And he wants to buy CDs at $80 each. So $80 times the number of CDs will give you the total amount of money he spent on CDs. And the number of CDs is X. So 80 times X will give you the total amount of money he spent on purchasing CDs. Likewise, the cassettes cost $40 each. So 40 times the number of cassettes will give you the total amount of money he spent on cassettes. And the number of cassettes would be Y. So 40 times Y will give you a total amount of money he spent on cassettes. So a total amount of money he spent on CDs plus the total amount of money he spent on cassettes cannot cross $760. Now cannot cross $760 means the money must be less than or equal to $760. So the money spent on CDs would be 80 times X plus the money spent on cassettes will be 40 times Y, and that money cannot cross $760. So that must be less than or equal to $760. And this would be our first inequality. Now these numbers are pretty big, and we know whatever you do to one side of the inequality sign, you must do the same thing to the other side. And I'm seeing that you know these numbers could be divided by two, and by 10 by crossing all these zeros, and maybe even 40. So let's check 760 divided by 40 because we know, well, 40 could go into 40 and 40 could go into 80. So we're going to check 760 divided by 40 and we get 19. Therefore, we could divide everything by 40. So 80x divided by 40 will just give it 2x. So we'll have 2x plus, of course, 40 divided by 40 is 1, which would be 1y, which is just y, less than or equal to, and then 760 divided by 40 is 19. Therefore, first inequality could be rewritten as 2x plus y is less than or equal to 19. So it's on smaller numbers to deal with. Now let's keep reading to get the other inequalities, which are our constraints. 
So we have, he must buy more than one CD. Now you cannot have a fraction of a CD. You can either have zero CDs, one CD, two CDs, and so on. So more than one CD would mean two or more. So a number of CDs must be more than or equal to two. And this would be our second inequality, our second constraint. That a number of CDs, which is X, must be more than or equal to two. So this is inequality number two. Then we have, but not more than six CDs. So a number of CDs cannot cross six. Six or less, which is less than or equal to six. And again, the number of CDs is X. So X, the number of CDs, must be less than or equal to six. And that's our third constraint, our third inequality. So let's keep reading. We have, he must also buy at least two cassettes. Now, at least two cassettes means two cassettes is the minimum, which means two or more, which would translate to the number of cassettes must be greater than or equal to two. And remember, the number of cassettes is Y. So we're going to have Y must be greater than or equal to two. And that would be our fourth inequality or fourth constraint. Now, this section here, the profit will give us our function for the profit. So we have the businessman make a profit of $25 on each CD. Now, remember, the number of CDs is X. So $25 times the number of CDs will give you the profit he made for the CDs. So that's 25X is the profit for the CDs. And $15 on each cassette. So $15 times the number of cassettes. And the number of cassettes is Y. So 15 times Y is the profit he made for the cassettes. So his total profit would be 25X, profit for the CDs, plus 15Y, the profit for the cassettes. So my function that I have to optimize would be this. Profit is equal to 25X, that's the profit for the CDs plus 15y, which is the profit for the cassettes. Now we'd have to go on the other page and represent these inequalities on the Cartesian plane, find the region that satisfies all the inequalities, and then we could figure out how to optimize this function. Now these three inequalities here would be easy to represent on the Cartesian plane, but this one here would need some work, and instead of using these big numbers, we'll use this version of it. So here I am on the other page. I have my inequality, the first one. Of course, I'm using the one with the smaller numbers. And what I have to do here is first, I'm going to transpose for y, make y the subject of the formula. Because when I put this inequality on the Cartesian plane, I need to know whether I'm shading above the line or below the line. So I'll leave the y on the left-hand side. I'm going to transfer this 2x across the inequality sign to the right-hand side. So y remains here. We have less than or equal to 19 remains here. And this positive 2x transfer across will turn to negative 2x. So take away 2x. And now we know y is less than or equal to 19 take away 2x. And as you know, less than or equal to means we shade it below the line. y is less than below the line. If it was y is more than, above the line in terms of the shading. Now what I'll also do for this inequality is I'll stay the boundary line and then I'll find the x-intercept and the y-intercept. So the boundary line is going to be 2x plus y is equal to 19. As you know, for the x and y intercept, we're going to put x is equal to 0 for the y intercept and y is equal to 0 for the x intercept. So I'm just going to put when x is equal to 0, we're going to have 2x plus y is equal to 19. Of course, we're going to put the x is equal to 0, so that's 2 times 0 plus y is equal to 19. 2 times 0 is 0. And of course, zero is nothing, so we just end up with y is equal to 19. So we have y is equal to 19, and this is our y-intercept. So y-intercept would be x is zero, and y is 19. Now we're going to put when y is equal to zero. We have 2x plus y is equal to 19. We're going to put y is equal to 0, so we have 2x plus 0 is equal to 19. Of course, 0 is nothing, so that means we have 2x is equal to 19. When we transfer 2 across the equal sign, it will turn from 2 multiplied by x to 19 divided by 2. 
meaning the operation change from multiplication to division. Or I can say divide both sides by 2. So we have x is equal to 19 divided by 2. And of course, 19 divided by 2 is 9.5 or 9.5. So I write that as 9.5. So which means our x-intercept would be 9.5 on the x-axis and 0 on the y. All right, so here I have my first inequality and I just list out the x-intercept for it and the y-intercept. And of course, we'll need to know that y was less than or equal to 19 take away 2x. Now, my other inequalities are x is greater than or equal to 2, y is less than or equal to 6, and y is greater than or equal to 2. So we have x is greater than or equal to 2 as my second inequality, x is less than or equal to 6 as my third inequality, and of course, y is greater than or equal to 2 as my fourth inequality. So now we need to represent these four inequalities on the Cartesian plane. So just a brief look, I need to go up to nine, well, at least 10 on the x-axis and 19 on the y-axis for this one. Now let's look at the others. Well, up to two on the x-axis, six on the x-axis and two. So if I were to go up to 10 on the x-axis, it will cover this and this. And if I were to go up to 19 on the y-axis, it would definitely cover this. So here I have my grid paper, I have my y-axis here and my x-axis. So I'm going to label the axes and put in the numbers. All right, so labeling this as the y-axis, labeling here as the x-axis. Now, given the space that I have here, and I know I need to go up to 19, so I'll go up to about 20, I would count in twos. So of course, down here will be the origin, which will be 0 for the x and also 0 for the y. And here will be 2, 4, and so on. Okay, so I'm sure 19 could fit on the y-axis now. And for the x-axis, every one centimeter, let's go up by one unit. So for the y-axis, what I have here is every one centimeter, I'm going up by two units. And of course, for the x, every one centimeter, I'm going up by one unit. So here's going to be one, two, and so on. So now, with our first inequality here, we have our x-intercept as nine and a half, and y-intercept as 19. So let's do the x-intercept first. So that's 9.5 on the x-axis and of course 0 on the y. So that will be in the middle of 9 and 10. So that will be right here. Exactly in the middle, 2.5 blocks away from 9 and 2.5 blocks away from 10. And for our y-intercept, which is 19, it will be in the middle of 18 and 20. So again, it will be 2.5 blocks away from 18 and 2.5 blocks away from 20. Exactly in the middle. So now what we'll do is take our ruler and draw a line connecting these two points. Now this part is for the shading. We have y is less than or equal to, which will mean shading below the line. But we are going to represent multiple inequalities on the Cartesian plane, and we want to find a region that satisfies all the inequalities. Therefore, I'm going to shade the opposite direction. So when I'm supposed to shade below the line, I'm going to shade above the line. So I'm shading above the line like this. And of course, I'm going to put a label for my boundary line, which is 2x plus y is equal to 19. That's our boundary line. That's this line here. So now for this one, easy, x is greater than or equal to 2. So our boundary line will be x is equal to 2. So we find 2 on the x-axis and let's draw a vertical line. So this is my boundary line, x is equal to 2. And of course, we have x is more than 2, so that's supposed to be shading to the right. But since we're doing the opposite, we're going to shade to the left. So we are shading this side, which is on the left, which is the opposite direction that we're supposed to be shading. Next, we have x is less than or equal to 6, so our boundary line will be x is equal to 6. So that's 6 on the x-axis. I'm going to draw a vertical line. So we locate 6 on the x-axis and we put our vertical line and our boundary line would be x is equal to 6. So now we have x is less than or equal to 6. So less than or equal to 6 means shade to the left. But we are going to do the opposite, which is shade to the right. So shade into the right of the line would look like this. 
And now our last inequality, y is greater than or equal to 2. So our boundary line will be y is equal to 2. So we locate 2 on the y-axis and just draw a horizontal line. And of course, this boundary line is y is equal to 2. Now, y is more than or equal to 2 means shading above this line, but we're going to do the opposite and shade below the line. So we're shading down here like this. So now the region that will satisfy all four inequalities will be this unshaded region here. And this forms a four-sided polygon, which is a quadrilateral. So now what we would want is the coordinates of the vertex of this quadrilateral to put into our profit function to see which one would be the maximum. So we have this point here. So from this line here, which is 14 on the Y, we have one, two and a half blocks. So that'd be 15 on the Y. And of course it's in line with two on the X. So we're gonna have two on the X and 15 on the Y. Then we have this point down here. And of course this one is easy to see. We have two on the Y and also two on the X. So that's two on the X and also two on the Y. Then we have this point here. Now, of course, for this point, x is 6. So we're going to write 6 for the x. And for the y, we're starting at 6. And we're going up 1, 2, and a half blocks. So that'll be 7 on the y. So this is 7. And then, of course, this point here, easy to read off. This will be 6 on the x and 2 on the y. So we have 6 on the x and 2 on the y. So now that we have our four vertices, I'm going to go and get my profit function, which would be this, 25x plus 15y. So I'm going to write profit is equal to 25x plus 15y. And now we'll test each of the four vertices to see which one will give us the maximum profit. So let's start with the 2 and 15. So using 2, 15. So the 2 is x and the 15 is y. So my profit, which is equal to 25x plus 15y, replace the x with 2. That's because x is 2 here. Plus 15 times y and y is 15. So 25 times 2 is 50, and 15 times 15 is 225. So 50 plus 225 is equal to 275. So we have 275. And of course, this will be money, so $275. Next, we'll check this vertex, which is 6, 7. So using... Coordinate 6, 7. Of course, the 6 is x and the 7 is y. We have our profit function, which is equal to 25x plus 15y. So we have 25 times x, which is 6, plus 15 times y, which is 7. So we can work that straight out on the calculator. We could just put 25, open bracket 6, which is 25 times 6 plus 15 times 7, so 15 open brackets, 7, close brackets, and we get 255. So our profit here is $255. So next we'll check this vertex, which is 2 on the X and 2 on the Y. So using 2, 2, of course this is your X, this is your Y, we have our profit function which is equal to 25x plus 15y. So we have 25 times 2 plus 15 times 2. Because both x and y is 2. And this one is e, 25 times 2 is 50. And 15 times 2 is 30. So 50 plus 30 is 80. So this is just 80 dollars. And now for the last vertex, which is 6 on the X and 2 on the Y. So using 
6, 2. Of course, 6 is the x and 2 is the y. Our profit function is equal to 25 times x plus 15 times y. So we have 25 times x, which is 6, plus 15 times y, which is 2. So this is equal to, and again, I'll use the calculator for this. So 25 times 6 plus 15 times 2, and we get 180. So our profit here is $180. So now we can clearly see that the maximum profit is $275, and that's when you use 2 for the X and 15 for the Y. And remember, X is the number of CDs and Y is the number of cassettes. So 2 CDs and 15 cassettes. So if the businessman bought 2 CDs and 15 cassettes to resell, he would get his maximum profit of $275. So let's just go back to the question and see what they wanted us to find. We have determined the number of CDs and cassettes he must buy to give a maximum profit. And that would be two CDs because CDs is X and 15 cassettes, which is Y. And the maximum profit is 275. And that will bring us to the end of this video.